everyone. Happy Wednesday. I am here with my social media managers, Kim Vanderpool, to talk a little bit about the struggles that people have with social media. If you are watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe so you get notifications of future videos. So welcome, Kim. Hello, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Okay, good. So this is, uh, you know what? I'm finding a lot of what I used to hear probably two years ago. Like, I don't want to use Facebook. I don't want to be on social media. Like, I'm getting more of that again. Are you finding that? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I am hearing more of that. Definitely hearing more of that. And my response is, it doesn't really matter if you don't want to be on it, if your people are on it. <laughs> I know, right? With a smile on your face. <laughs> yes, right? yes. And I always go, um, well, that's nice. You don't want to be on it. But if it could bring you business and you're in charge of bringing in business at your company, why would you turn your nose up at something that's free marketing? Right. Minus right. your time, of course. Correct. Correct. And it's a matter of being smart about how you're using it because we can be honest. We all get social media fatigue sometimes. Like it's like, I don't know if I want to go on Instagram. I don't know if I want to go on Facebook or you hear all everyone saying, well, Facebook doesn't work. Facebook's dying. Well, 85% of Americans still log into Facebook on a consistent basis. It's 85%. Not yes. So people are still logging in. And if that's where your people are, and if you have, if that's just a great way to potentially market your business in a way that builds a relationship with your clients or potential clients versus um, some of the other ones. Because a lot of times they'll hear, well, I don't want to be, so, I don't want to be salesy. I'm not salesy. Well, social media is perfect for that because you don't have to be salesy. It's more about building that relationship and that connection with a potential client. Well, yeah. And I, I'm going to make it even simpler. If no one knows what you do, then no one's going to know to come to you when they need you. Correct. Correct. Yes. Yes. And like I was just talking to someone the other day in the Get It Done Club because she was struggling about exactly what all the different platforms for. And I said, well, like Instagram, think of it as kind of like it's a social portfolio, basically. It's where you can show what you do like a magazine, like it's just a great way, like you can think of magazines and all the different images you can go look at. Well, they can come to your Instagram if you've got the right marketing focus and see all the different images and the projects that you've done. And it's just a way, great way to showcase who you are and what you do. I love that. It's like a magazine. Yes. Yeah, it is. It is. You know, and when we look at like Facebook, if we think of that more of the yellow pages is that we don't have those big old telephone books, most of us, coming to us anymore. We look up on Yellow Pages, but we had it open over this weekend for Easter. We wanted to order out at the local restaurant. Well, we couldn't find the menu, so we went to their Facebook page, and they had their menu, and we got their phone number and everything right there. If they wouldn't have had a Facebook page, we probably wouldn't have found them because we couldn't quite remember what their name was, And but we knew that it was in our local area and the restaurants, it was very easy to find through the Facebook platform. Great example. And I always say that even if somebody finds you as an interior designer, they're going to jump over to Facebook and Instagram to see what's there and see if you're active or even have one. And if you don't have one and you're not active consistently, they're going to question whether you are a legitimate you know, working company or, or whether you've slowed down and you're sort of given up and you're out of business. Like they don't right. know, they don't see anything. And they, people in this day and age actually do get nervous if someone doesn't have a social media page. And it shows people that you care about them before you even know them. So there are lots of, um, you know, cause I'm kind of critical on what people post, not like bad, but it's like, oh, that's kind of lazy marketing. <laughs> and when you see that, it shows to me is one, they're either uneducated on how to do their marketing or two, they don't care about me. They just want to get something out there because they're going to try selling me. And it really, when you do it correctly focused with an intention in mind, you can really show those people that are potential clients that you care about them or even your current clients that you care about others before they even know who you are and sometimes it's even especially designers um especially if you tend to do more of the luxury brand design that your clients maybe won't find you on instagram but i can guarantee that if you and i were at a social networking event and you said oh my goodness i had my designer here and i'm so excited she did this this and this guess where i'm gonna go when i go home 
I'm going to go to Instagram and check out that designer. Before I find her website, before I do anything else, I'm going to go check her out on, or today I her out on Instagram. And then that's where that magic happens. So they maybe didn't find you on Instagram, but they're guaranteed they're creeping on you, checking you out before they yeah. do I mean, business with you. It's true. And this is why social media is such an essential tool to connect with your audience, right? It's like it's building your brand. It's all the social media platforms help you attract a different like clientele because people like different platforms and hang out more sometimes on social media, on Facebook versus Instagram versus TikTok versus Pinterest, right? Yes. yes. Everyone has their favorite sort of. And sometimes people can find me like LinkedIn is kind of a, a big secret among the interior designers because they're thinking like, well, why would I be on there? But even if the people that you're trying to attract, if that's your demographic, they may not be looking for a designer, but they can know that if you've been posting your project photos, you've been posting maybe tips or trends that are going on in this season, who do you think they're going to think of when they do need a design either in their company or at their home? They're going to be like, oh, I remember there's a designer on LinkedIn. Let me go see if I can find them. Yes. And that's where that magic happens. And I think the LinkedIn clientele, those people who are on LinkedIn as more of their primary focus, are business people, are often the target of a lot of interior designers of that level. So those people may go, if they're not on LinkedIn, I don't think they're a legit business. Like everyone has their like pre-existing criteria right. in their right. head. Correct. And as far as, you know, what I hear a lot is like, we all wear so many hats and we get so overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like when you think about dieting, like you have the keto diet, you have the paleo, you have the vegetarian, you have all these things and we make it so complicated. No, we just have to watch what we eat. Like if you eat 5,000 calories, you're probably gonna gain weight. You know, just really- right. Calories in, calories out. Right, that's yeah. basically, and same with social media is we don't have to, you know, optimize our platform, start with a goal, like what, what is our main goal? If you're just starting out, it's brand recognition. You want mm -hmm. people to know who you are and then build your strategy around that and look at your time. Like I can tell you that, hey, people that post twice a day, every day of the week have really great success. But if you realistic only can post one post a week, that's where you start is that one post a week. And then you build up from there. Um, I'm not telling that everybody needs to post twice a day, <laughs> every day of the week. Yeah, but let's be clear. We're not saying you need to be clear. Ahead. That's not what we usually recommend. But I recommend starting where you're at, optimizing your platform, show people that you are a professional, that you're not sloppy. You would not go to a client meeting necessarily wearing your grungy garden clothes. You would dress up and be professional. And social platforms, having the cover photo, having everything optimized, having a LinkedIn company page, having all those I's dotted and T's crossed, you're showing up as a professional. It's the first impression of you. And so why wouldn't you take the two hours to be, make sure everything's connected and make sure. I know it's frustrating, isn't it? <laughs> I know. It is. It's frustrating. Like at least have a profile on as many platforms. And then again, in, with some of the programs you teach people to use, you can take one post and put it across all platforms. So once you've set up your two hours of focus of getting your platforms set up, right. then you can post to every platform almost simultaneously if you're using the right programs that you give everybody who joined the Get It Done Club. You know, right. right? right. So yeah. it's easy once you have all your platforms set up to post across. And right. then you've got to add the social aspect, correct? Because a lot of people struggle with, um, a lot of the common struggles are time. They don't know where to get information. They don't understand how to do it. So your starting point is start by just setting up your profiles. Correct. Completely. Yep. And decide which ones you want to use and what makes sense to you. So if someone comes in to our Get It Done Club or that I'm working with a private land of one-to-one -one coaching and training. We always set up Facebook. If they're a designer, we always set up Facebook and we always set up Instagram and we always set up their Google My Business profile. Yes, absolutely. Um, the Google My Business profile is, again, another secret. It's not really a social profile, but it is great to help drive traffic to your website. It's great for, it's just the amount of clients that we have since we started um, 
since we always put them on the Google My Business, one gal was on like eight or nine page Google rank, like on the ninth page, but she only posted twice a week. And within a year, she was like on the first page of Google. And that was the only difference that we did was that we consistently posted to her social platform. So she started showing up on her social media platforms when they were searching and then her Google um, posting. So it makes a difference. So just, you know, those would be the three. If you're a luxury brand and you have the bandwidth, with, we definitely recommend LinkedIn. And then if it makes sense, um, Pinterest. And that's kind of depending, again, what what your brand goals are and what your focus is, if Pinterest makes sense for you or not. Um, Pinterest works really well on certain industries, certain brands, designers, if you're selling products or if you are a designer more, um, if you're nationwide or more popular population, then right. it would make sense um, right. for Pinterest for marketing. Yeah, because Pinterest is, is you can't localize it. So it's not, it's right. international basically, right? Yeah. Anyone who has access. But like you said, if you're selling products, which, you know, it's funny, I, I coach thousands of interior designers, anyone who's ever tried to sell product is if it's not their primary focus, it actually usually gives them very little for the time they put into it. So depending, I think if you have a big enough following, go that route and test the waters, right? You right. just need to test it. Right. Pinterest is great a tool to work with clients. Like if you're trying to do yeah. dream boards and trying to get clients and setting up client boards, private boards, so that you can share ideas back and forth. That works great. Um, it does work good for certain, it depends on the designer, yes. if it makes sense. But. Yeah, I think it depends on whether, like you said, whether they are starting to become an influencer status, if they have a larger following, sometimes Pinterest can be beneficial. Right. Or for you, Pinterest is very beneficial because you have a lot of blogs and a lot of the keywords and stuff. So then people can find them when they're searching on Pinterest. Think of it as a big search engine and then they can find your website. Um, so that's where it makes some some sense. You really have to use Pinterest. It's a different marketing tactic that you would need to use to approach to for Pinterest. OK, so tips for effective marketing and building your brand. So definitely be on Facebook, but definitely be on uh, Instagram, Instagram as yep. a starting point. And then just get all your profiles cleaned uh -huh. up and yep. consistent across board to colors and everything. Right. And then start posting, even if it's the same post across platforms, at least how many times a week as a starting point? If you could do it, it's great to do three. Okay. Um, you know, you can get by, I've got a client, we just do one post a week. Um, She's just, just brand recognition. That's all it is. Yeah. And I have to say, if you're not really looking to get business from Instagram or get business from right. Facebook, you're actually okay with just saying, I'm going to post once a week. So if anyone does, like we talked about in the beginning, if anyone's uh, tuning in now, go back and listen. If people find your company in any way, even if it's from a friend, right. they're going to go on to Facebook and Instagram and see if you exist and see if you're active in order to see whether they want to work with you. And that's also a great place for them to sort of get a preview of your personality also in stories if you're doing it. Consistently. Right. It's a great way to build connection because if you're a Starbucks fan and you see a designer going to Starbucks, you automatically connect with them. Or if you see that the designer is going to botanical gardens and you love gardening, and flowers, you've already built that connection. And so if you think of it as like almost like dating, if you have that connection or if it's a blind date and you know you're going on a blind date, but you know that person likes something, then it, it just builds that automatic connection. So you can at least have a talking point when you first get started and that can build that relationship for it. Yeah. Common, yes. common denominator is right. really important. Um, that dating analogy again with that consistent posting what I like to say is that if you and I had a, a date set up to go to the coffee shop I'm there waiting you blow it off you don't show up I may be a little frustrated whatever but you say hey Kim I'm sorry I didn't show up let's meet next week we try doing it next week and then you don't show up again now my irritation factor is a little bit higher hmm. and then we made another date and then mm -hmm. we try showing up doing it again in three weeks and you blow me off completely. I no longer trust you. And yes. that's what happens when we don't post consistently is that if you post once today and then you don't post again for six months, you've lost my trust factor. I'm waiting at the coffee shop for you and you're not showing up. 
And so well, it's funny because when you're saying this, I, I can feel people probably going, yeah, it's not really quite the same, but it is because if they're following you and they're trusting uh -huh. your advice and they want, or they check on you, they're going to, I, I'm going to say the way you deal with your social media is a reflection subconsciously to them of how you deal with your business. Correct. So Correct. if you're not efficient and on point with your social media, being consistent and sharing, someone may say, well, I wonder what's going to happen when they're actually doing my project. They're obviously all over the place with their social Correct. media. And that's why, um, you know, we've worked with designers for quite a few years. And sometimes it makes sense if they've had built their platform and they know what they're doing on social media for us to take over and go from the next step. Sometimes, especially if they're a newer designer, they haven't used social media. It's really hard for us to take over because they haven't built their brand. And I ran into this with my own brand just in the last few months is that um, I had you know, we were, we had some team members internally working on it. And I went and looked at my feed and it's like, this is not really a true reflection of who I am. Yeah. So I had to stop everything. And now we're pivoting so that I can get my messaging across because some of it was okay, but it wasn't me. And so don't be afraid to post stuff out. Like, I don't know what to post. What if it's wrong? So what? You can stop and pivot at any time Yes. to make your marketing right. You can change it as you get going. It's not a do or die thing. It's a, it's a not step. black and white. It's no, a it's living, a breathing piece of your business that is going to change and morph Correct. based on what you learn and the direction you want to go in. And it's like the life of an artist, the life of a business changes. Let right. your social media change with you. It's okay. Your designs will change as you grow and develop as a designer. Your business is going to grow. Your marketing is going to be the same way. Mm -hmm. The thing is, is that when you show up, people can trust you. They can know you. They can get to know you. And it takes 20 times for them to see you before they even start that relationship. Oh, that, that number keeps going up. It used to be seven to 15 and now it's literally 15 to 20. Yes. Yes. But they have to see you just so everyone understands. It's a touch point with you. If someone right. is on the fence about whether they need you and are hiring you, the statistic on average is that they need to see you 18 to 20 times before they say yes. Correct. Which is, I will tell you why most of the time um, people, when they get on my calendar, like if they're going into the Profit Insider program or getting on my calendar, they're like, they feel like they know me already because they have been watching my videos and watching my lives and being exposed to my blogs, my emails, my this. I don't even know. Sometimes it's two or three years before they hire me, right? So right. apply that to your interior design firm and realize that your consistent knowledge and expertise is what you want to put out on your social media so that when they think of doing a project in their home, they wake up one morning and they hate their bathroom. They're going to be able to find you quickly because you posted again that week as opposed to trying to find you. Correct. Correct. And even before you and I started working a few years ago back, I went to your Instagram and I went through all your highlights mm -hmm. because I wanted to see who you were like because I'm very picky about who I work with. And that was a way for me to get to know you in a quick fashion when I went through your highlights. Oh, look, she's having fun, a shallow dog. And, blah. and I could, again, build that connection where I could see where our synergies were aligned. But that was the first thing I did when someone referred me to you before our meeting. I went on your Instagram and I looked at your highlights to see what you had put down to yes. see if I was even willing to make that phone call. So. Right. And it, you know what? And I'm I'm the first person to tell everyone who's watching that it is weird to be out on social media for oh, at hard. least me and my generation. For sure. I think it's pretty standard across the board that we get this weird like, why do I anyone want to know this about me? Why do I need to post my dog or where I'm walking? Or, But I will tell you when you do it and just don't think it's a big deal, just share a little bit of your life. People do connect dog people. If I'm posting that I'm a pescatarian, I don't eat meat, people connect with me on that. They they connect with you on different things that you may not even expect. So share. Correct. And, and, and then they like you and they know you and they feel like they can work with you. And we understand it is hard to, to do it. Like I was yesterday, I've been doing this ROM tech bike for my physical therapy and I was on it. It's like, this is a perfect analogy of what it's like to be a business owner. But I didn't go on, didn't do my live in my group because I didn't have my hair done and I didn't do this. And it's like, you know, but now this morning, this is my goal 
my challenge to get on there and do a live explaining how this bike is like being a business owner. <laughs> so. Right, right. Yeah, it is. It's hard. It's hard it to it be live every day for them. I'm live almost every day somewhere. And it does get hard. And eventually you give up on the whole hair, makeup, lipstick. Like I just put it on right before. My hair is up today. I didn't even straighten it. Be authentic. And whoever's supposed to work with you will be attracted to you and want to work with you for who you are. Correct. Correct. Yes. Are. Yes. Yep. Yep. So usually we have a challenge. Mm -hmm. And my challenge is, is change your social media marketing by 1%. 1% of your day is 14 minutes. So sometime in this next week, spend 14 minutes advancing your social media marketing, whether it's optimizing your platforms, looking at them all, making sure your brand's consistent on every platform, whether it's mapping out what you want to do for marketing for the next couple months, like what kind of posts do you want to do? What kind of, what is your goal? Is it brand recognition? Or do you really need that phone to ring? Because that's a different approach. And how can you do that? So spend 14 minutes sometime in the next week focused exactly just on your social media. And I'm going to add a third one. Focus on interacting with other people, other people's accounts, because yes. social media is supposed to be social. Um, and I'm going to add the final one. Spend 14 minutes hopping over to KimVanderpool.com and check out what Kim has to offer for you to help you with your social media. It's not a, she has to do it all for you. Her company has to do it all for you. She's not going to hard sell you. I think the people need to know that about you, Kim. You have the Get It Done Club, which is the first step to getting your own voice and your own branding out there with a coach and guidance along the way. Explain to people how that works. So what the Get It Done Club is, is yeah, we are a coach. We, are hold, it, we hold your hand. We are a cheerleader. And so basically it's every week you show up and we have different times that you can show up and we either help with the tech, we help with the marketing, we're a sounding board for ideas, ideas where um, there's a group so people can sometimes bounce ideas or we have one girl that comes on and she puts herself on Zoom on mute and she puts her video on mute and she uses it for an hour to write her blog posts and everything, but she shows up, it's an accountability thing for her. So everybody uses it differently. Um, and we had someone the other day that wanted the Facebook ads. So then I looked at her ads manager to make sure that it was all connected correctly and kind of gave a quick little one-on-one -on, -one on how to do that. So basically it's cheerleader and coach all in one. Um, we need a coach accountability group all in one. Correct. Correct. And I like that you said that I'm not a hard sell. I had a client, a new uh, consult call the other day, and she had put down that she was looking at social media marketing and she was looking at our higher tier package. Well, in talking to her, she she was not quite there yet and so we ended up and she wasn't even to the point where the get it done club was a good choice for her because she didn't have any she didn't have facebook or instagram or anything set up mm -hmm. so um we actually directed her to doing one-to-one -one training for a session and then having her go into the get it done club and then once she's does the get it done club then with the goal is to transition to full-time marketing once she's at that point and we just i had an inquiry from someone that is in the get it done club and she goes, I love it. Not for me. What would it cost for you to do it for me? <laughs> so there's this, this transitions. And I really think people need to be where they're at comfort level for their finances, their time and their resources and their comprehension of what social media is. Yes. Yes. I think it's just an incredible learning opportunity for such a um, competitive cost. And I really recommend it first hundred percent before they just hire someone to do their social media, because I want them to understand each platform. What's the difference, which ones make sense for them and define their own voice and style for their social media before they just hand it over. And then they're like, not happy with what a company is doing for them. But it's not what I was thinking. Okay. Well, right. what were you thinking? Like you didn't give us any guidelines. Like you must run into that a ton. Correct. Correct. And because people think marketing is like, I'm just doing social media marketing. Well, our approach is it's not one size fits all. Right. And everybody's unique, just like one design doesn't fit all. Right. And so figuring out what makes sense for you, where you're at in the stage of the marketing journey. But social media marketing is an amazing tool to have in your toolbox when it's used correctly. All right. And we're going to end on that note. Everybody go visit Kim at her website. Check out what she has to offer and let her help you grow your social media in the right way for your business. Thank you, Nancy. Thanks, Kim. Talk to you next time. Bye, everyone. Go have a great Wednesday.